Hi, I'm Rob Borum and thank you for taking the time to watch this video. We're going to have a look at how to create a Four Seasons employee name badge using the Gravograph M20 IQ engraver. We will cover entering the badge dimensions and typing the name within the software, sending the engraving instructions, using the plastic badge holder, setting the cutting tool and finally engraving. Here are a few pictures of the lovely De Roche Island where I was assisting with the Four Seasons Hotel opening and recorded the engraving. I'd like to advise you that I'm not a Four Seasons employee and this is my own production. Please enjoy the video and good luck with your engraving. The Gravograph machine is an engraving business machine so it has a lot of functionality and applications. To engrave the name badges is only scratching the surface of what can be achieved. Hopefully you or the IT department have loaded the software and driver from the DVD included with the delivery. Connect the cables and remember to put the license dongle into the USB port. To engrave the name badge you need the white plastic holder delivered with blank badges. You will also need the Allen key screwdriver to set the cutting tool. So, to start we are working on the PC using the software layout wizard that looks like this. Basically we are creating on the screen the dimensions of the complete badge and then using the margin parameters to stipulate the area in which we want the name to be engraved. Check the unit of measure on instructions and your machine and convert if necessary. I entered the dimensions of the badge in millimetres 67.5 millimeters across and then 15 millimeters height. Key under plate dimensions. Remember this defines the whole badge size. Now enter the margin dimensions. We want to engrave in the area to the right so the left margin is 21 millimeters so the engraving will miss the logo. An advantage of using the white badge holder is that when it is put into the dark grey vice grips, the badge is positioned centrally to the vice, which is where the software takes its reference. Now setting the font is important. I used the SL513 intern, which was listed on the instructions, but suggest you check which is the correct font with your marketing department. From your list of names, type in the person's name. It automatically centers. We are now going to check the engraving instructions by pressing this engraving button or use Control M. I will run through the main items on this screen so you can check your settings. We are going to engrave using the regulating nose method. The nose is the cone shaped piece at the bottom of the engraving head where the cutting tool is located. In a minute we will see how we set the auto Z ref point and cutting height. This measurement here is the Z clearance. We want the cutting tool to lift up during the engraving so leave at the default of two millimeters. These buttons here with the dials are for changing how fast the tool moves while engraving. For the badges I kept to the left which is slow. You can set the machine to run two or more passes with these numbers. The egg timer creates a dwell so the cutting tool pauses. I said it but don't worry too much. Finally this button is important and should be activated as we want the cutting tool to spin. With instructions complete press OK then run to send the instruction to the engraver. You should hear two beeps. Now if you press the green button twice the engraving will start. But for the first badge we are going to set the cutting tool and engraving height for the regulating nose method. 
This is also found on page 542 of the manual on the driver DVD. For now we press the green button only once. This moves the cutting head to the point above where it will start engraving. We are now going to take out the cutting tool. Loosen the small allen screw and lift the cutting tool completely out. The next thing is to position the dial on the metal nose holder to zero. If you are putting on the holder for the first time, turn to the top and then back a couple of turns, then select zero. We now press the tick key on the keypad. This will send the nose down until it reaches the surface of the main tag. We then return the cutting tool and retighten the Allen key. We now hit the tick key again, confirming the ZREF point. The head containing the cutting tool will rise again. At this point, the tip of the cutting tool is aligned with the nose. Now, to engrave the badge, we are going to expose a tiny amount of the cutting tool, and that will be your cutting depth. We do this by turning the nose holder clockwise, but not much. For the name tags, I turn the ring to 10. Therefore, unscrew the clamp, turn the ring clockwise to 10, and remember to retighten the clamp. You can see on this picture the cutting tool is now protruding out of the end of the nose. Now before you hit the green button to start, the vendor recommends you put a post-it note on top. This is a good idea as it stops the head or any swarf scratching the surface of the badge. Now press the green enter key. The machine will start to engrave the name. You should hear the cutting tool is spinning as well, so the process is quite noisy. When complete, put a new badge, type a new name and send instruction. No need to reset the cutting tool, so just two presses on the green button. So that is the engraving of the name badge. You just need to put the paint supplied to complete the badge. If you send me a request through the website, I will send you a link to a further video showing engraving plastic and connecting the compact chip cutter. So thank you for watching. I am Rob Borum, hoping you found this video useful. For any further assistance, comment, then please contact me through the website, social media, or connect with me through LinkedIn.